extraordinary and historic battle unfolding on Capitol Hill. And for the first time in a century, the vote for House Speaker has gone to a second ballot. We want to fundamentally change the way Washington, D.C. operates. They're less than an hour away from going into day four without a Speaker of the House. Seventh failed vote. I don't think a secure border is petty. I don't think a term limits bill being brought to the floor, not demanded to pass, but brought to the floor so we actually have an option to vote on that is petty. There's nothing extreme. There's nothing unreasonable. We're trying to get this right. We are here to legislate. We are here to get the country back on track. I believe that this is a moment in time that was created for us to get the best deal for the American people. This isn't chaos. I'm a mom of four boys. I know what chaos and dysfunction looks like. We are going to come together. We are going to be stronger than ever. This is a constitutional republic at work. Every single one of the 20 conservatives that demanded these changes did so for the good of the country. We all want a unified party. We need a united Republican Party to fight hard. I think we now have that. Breaking news from Capitol Hill this hour. Representative Kevin McCarthy has now been elected Speaker of the House. I'm proud that we took a few extra days to make sure that we get this right. There are a lot of great things that were done because of what you guys did to hold out on this stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Colorado, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. Hello, CPAC! It is wonderful to be with y'all. Look at you. This is a week of liberty. This is a week of unity. We are coming together to take our country back. It is always so great to be in a room full of American loving patriots who love God, who love their country, and who will not ever back down. As you saw in the video, me and the most conservative members of Congress fought one heck of a fight the first week of Congress. We heard from you, you said that Congress is broken, and we went to D.C. to fix it, and we did not back down. We came to make historic, fundamental changes in Washington, D.C., and that's exactly what the American people have been demanding. The changes that we made allowed for single-subject legislation. You know, 47 state legislatures have single subject legislation. I think we could do that in Washington, D.C. and be effective. <laughs> Last year, the Democrats disgracefully would title a bill one way and then load it with a bunch of garbage that had nothing to do with the title like the shameful infrastructure bill, $1.2 trillion, where less than 10 percent went towards actual infrastructure. Or what about the Inflation Reduction Act, AKA the Green New Deal? We put an end to all of that. And guess what? Members of Congress can actually go to the House floor and amend bills. What a concept. Giving everyone a voice, giving every member a seat at the table in the legislative pro progress. This is what you demanded, and this is what we delivered. It was absolutely worth taking a few extra days to make sure we got this right. But we have to make sure that these promises made and these promises that are kept keep on happening. We cannot slow down, and if anything, we need to get more aggressive. Some people say, hey, it's only March, but I say, it's already March. There are many things that we must do in this House majority that you, the American people, have entrusted us with. There is a lot of oversight that we need to do in this Congress. There are many agencies in the federal government that have gone woke. And you know the saying, folks, if you go woke, you go broke. 
We are going to make sure that all of these agencies that have been working against you, that have been weaponized against you, the American people, have congressional oversight, have an audit, and if there is any woke program in these agencies, it is immediately defunded. That's right, part of the speaker concessions, we now fund the government as intended. We have gotten rid of the horrific omnibus bills. And this is our opportunity to not just get spending under control, but to ensure that we have the right policies. In these 12 appropriations bills, we have to make sure that we are undoing everything the left has done legislatively to destroy our country. Every diversity, equity, and inclusion program, every ESG rule, every woke initiative in our military must be uprooted and completely defunded. We will demand that schools stop teaching our children to hate their country, to hate their classmates because of the color of their skin, and stop confusing our babies with your groomer gender ideologue. Shame on you. Every one of these agencies, every last one of them, needs an audit. The federal government has become too big. The only three letters that our founding fathers ever thought were necessary are USA. We are going to have the oversight. We are going to have the spending fights. And we are going to win. We have truth on our side. And we win by standing on truth, by building rather than destroying. And by, as scripture says, clinging to what is good. This fight has come to us. We didn't ask for it, but we have the weapons to win. It will require all of us to stand and fight alongside one another. And we must stand united in this battle against actual evil. The spoken word, the spoken word is the most powerful force in the universe. The world was created with words. Why do you think the woke left wants to silence your speech? If you are silent, you remain useless and you lose by default. God instruct us, instructs us time and time again in his word to use it. Psalm 107.20 says God sent his word and healed them. There's creative power in your words. What would you do if the Lord stood before you today and said from this moment forward, you will have whatever you say? Well, scripture has already said that to you. Mark eleven twenty three, 23, we're told to talk to our mountain. We aren't instructed to have our pastors speak to our mountain or have your girlfriend speak to your mountain. We're not supposed to complain about the mountain or hike halfway up it and set up camp on the mountain. You are to speak to that mountain and command it to be removed from your life. We all have these immovable objects in our life, these impossibilities. Sometimes they come in the form of laundry. <laughs> right, moms? But speak to those impossibilities. Speak life and truth. And that is exactly what we are doing this week. We are exposing the corruption. We are exposing the lies. And the oversight committee that I serve on, we've already been exposing big tech collusion with the federal government. Your federal government has been weaponized against you. They have been sent to silence you. They colluded with big tech to censor the Hunter Biden laptop 
from hell story. And we are going to continue to investigate Hunter Biden, not because he's a bad painter or bad at taking selfies or, you know, feels a little too free in a slip and slide every now and then. We are going to investigate Hunter Biden because he has used his father's positions in government for shady business dealings with Ukraine and China. We no longer need a resident in the White House. We need a president who puts America first and not his business dealings with corrupt foreign countries. I think the man that we need to put back in the White House will be here center stage tonight. It's time we get real leadership back in the White House someone who actually cares about you and puts you first. Isn't it disgusting when you can't tell where the FBI ends and where big tech begins? Yep. I have called for 230 protections to be removed from these big tech companies who are hiding behind Section 230, and they are acting like editors rather than publishers. This is unacceptable and you deserve so much more. You know, my friend, Congressman Matt Gates, he said, great hair. He said, we have issued tens of subpoenas. Well, those are rookie numbers, folks. I think we need to get those numbers up to the hundreds because every federal agency needs to come and speak and testify before Congress about what has been going on. You, the people, deserve to know what your government is up to. You deserve representatives that represent you. You deserve representatives who understand that we work for you not the other way around. There's so much enthusiasm in this movement. I'm excited to be a part of it. Don't let anyone grow weary in this time. We have just begun winning. We took back the House, and I'm excited about our slim majority because that gave us leverage to actually do something. Leverage to govern as we campaign, rather than looking at that R next to our name and thinking it stands for rollover. <laughs> for the first time in a long time, CPAC, conservatives are winning. It is our message and our policies that are going to get our country back on track, that are going to get the ATF under control. Who the heck do they think they are right now? The ATF doesn't make laws, Congress does. There's this thing called separation of powers, and I can't wait to drag them into oversight and remind them of that. But as you leave here, I want you to take everything that you have learned and share that. I want you to shine a light across this nation. America is the greatest country because of the men and women who have sacrificed and given their all for her. I'm tired of these politicians who think that they give you your rights and think that they're better than everyone else set out to destroy this great country. With record high inflation, 20 million Americans unable to pay their utility bills, sacrificing our energy independence that President Trump gained for us, opening up our southern borders, borders that we must now secure. And that must be a part of every funding debate that we have. Because we aren't going to fund a borderless country, and we are not going to fund tyranny any longer. But as you shine your light, shine it bright in your family. 
Shine it bright in your community, in your churches, in your schools, in the grocery store. Don't ever let anyone put you in the darkness, hide you out. You are the great American comeback. And together, we are restoring America back to where it belongs. We are taking our children back. We are taking our country back. We are closing our borders. We are making America what we know it to be, a country that is more exceptional than any other because our people are so great and we are united. CPAC, this is a great week of encouragement. I hope you leave here strengthened and encouraged, built up and stronger than ever. I love you all and God bless you. Thank you.